Well, since he was announced as Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate yesterday, there's been an increased attention spent on Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz and where he stands on key issues, including immigration. Waltz has supported efforts to make Minnesota a sanctuary state. And as of 2022, about 9% of the state's population is made up of immigrants. Most of the immigrants who settle in the state come from Mexico, Somalia, and India, according to state data. Here with me to help break down Waltz's record on immigration is CBS News correspondent Lilia Luciano. And I should say, recent immigrants, we are a nation of immigrants, but when we're talking about uh, the term a sanctuary state, not everybody's as familiar with it, but it is a political football. Explain to us what Waltz's position was, what he was doing it in is Minnesota. As you say, Lana, absolutely a political football. Uh, to explain what a sanctuary state, I'm going to use the opposite of what a sanctuary state is. Uh, I'm thinking something like Texas. Say, in Texas, for instance, Governor Greg Abbott, who's calling this ticket the most dangerous ever, um, he has implemented laws that empower local law enforcement, state law enforcement agencies to implement immigration laws. So a sanctuary state or a sanctuary city does the opposite. It prevents uh, or it limits how much cooperation there is between local and state law enforcement and immigration agencies like ICE. So, for instance, if somebody is here in New York City, for instance, if somebody is arrested, NYPD and corrections do not call ICE and say, hey, we're about to release somebody either on bail or for whatever reason. They don't cooperate. There, there are laws in New York that prevent that from happening. So there is a limit on how much local law enforcement can cooperate with federal law enforcement agencies, which are the ones that actually have the jurisdiction now, to implement would, law. Why would states want to do that? Because uh, one of the things that Waltz did was also sign a driver's license for all bill. Yeah. Um, so explain some of the rationale about why these states decide that it's a better option to become a sanctuary city, to provide driver's licenses, regardless of one's immigration status. So let's divide those two issues. One is the idea of a sanctuary state. What he has said in the past is that, look, cities and states are safer when you don't have local law enforcement implementing or stepping out of their jurisdiction, as Congress has granted them, and applying or implementing uh, federal immigration law. Basically, immigration law is up to federal agencies, local law enforcement is up to local law enforcement agencies. What he says is, look, if you have a fear from undocumented immigrants to call police, to cooperate with law enforcement, to say, hey, there's a crime because they fear that they're going to end up getting deported, you're going to have a less safe city. Now, on the issue of licenses, that's another law that he supported and passed uh, in Minnesota, which allows for undocumented people to have licenses. Why does he support this? Well, he says, A, it's safer for everyone because that way everybody who is driving is is going to have to get tested, is going to have to pass a test and be vetted and go through the process that everybody else has to go through. Uh, and so it's safer for people because everyone on the road is expected to have, you know, a license. People, what he says is, regardless of their immigration status, need to use cars to get to work. So if you're limiting it, limiting undocumented immigrants from getting a license to going to work, to taking their kids to school, doing all of those things, then on the one hand, you can't vet them. On the other hand, it impacts the economy because then these people are not going to be going to work. So he's saying, look, it's happening anyway. Give people licenses, allow them to contribute to the economy. And also, by the way, there's going to be more people paying uh, for car insurance because you need to have a license to, of course, drive. You need to go through all those tests. And undocumented immigrants then will also be insured. Uh, and, of course, there are other social reasons, he says. Look, if you have a license, you're going to take your kids to school, to soccer practice. You're going to be more involved in your, in your kids' lives. Well, real quick, Lilia, because we heard you say that Governor Abbott said that this is dangerous. We heard Senator vans uh, say that this is really liberal, yeah. but Waltz is from a moderate state. Are these positions liberal? Are they moderate? Where where do they actually land? What's the, the truth? The way that he explains this, explains them is they are practical. They are good for safety. They are good for uh, for the economy. The other side, I mean, people who oppose these laws say, especially with the driver license ones, is that allows for voter fraud to happen. But there are ways to limit that. There are ways to remove the possibility of just needing to show a license to get to vote. Uh, but I know we don't have the whole day to go into that. But this is where he says, he says, it's, it's practical, it's good for the economy, and it's good for safety. Not everyone agrees. Lilia Luciano, thank you so much, friend. Thank you, Lana.